Hi friends of Cocktoss, it's September and that means it's time to harvest some of the nature's gifts. Today I'll be using apples to make a delicious reef on a highball cocktail. It's a pairing of two things I love. The highball, a simple mix of scotch and soda water with a lemon twist, is at the top of the list of cocktails I make for myself at home. No fuss, no muss. Simple, elegant and refreshing. Today we'll pair that with apples, a fruit that's always been in our household when I was growing up. Apple juice, apple vinegar, apple pie or strudel, canned apples, you name it, we made it. But it was even more than that. During harvesting season, the whole family would go out and help in a nearby orchard as a way to earn some extra money. That's how we could afford the first computer for me and my sister. And you know, a kid remembers that forever. Long story short, I like apples. And I'm not the only one. Dave Arnold, the mad scientist of mixology, dedicated 70 pages of his influential book The Liquid Intelligence to Apples and Apple Juice in Cocktails. His Kentucky Kernel was the inspiration for today's Scotch and Apple Highball. So this won't be your typical highball, since we'll clarify some apple juice and carbonate the whole cocktail. Let's start, it's cocktail time. Dave Arnold uses a washed bourbon for the base spirit of his cocktail, but I'm making a scotch and apple highball. So I'm going with Upper Lower 12. This Speyside single malt scotch whiskey was matured in American oak and Spanish sherry casks. After 12 years, the rich flavors of both spirits are combined to get just the right balance of depth and flavor. With red apples on the nose, a shared taste with chocolate, toffee, ginger and cinnamon, it will work great with our clarified apple juice. It's a sweet dram and a great value if you're looking for a good single malt scotch. This will be perfect. I'll mix it with clarified apple juice, water, cherry bitters and a couple of drops of saline solution right in the soda siphon. To make clarified apple juice, you need apples, ascorbic acid or vitamin C, pectinex and 7 months. I'm just kidding, Jean Felix. If you haven't seen Truffles and Rocks make a delicious cocktail with clarified apple juice, after being challenged by me, make sure to check it out while you're waiting for the apple juice to clarify. Let's see how to make that happen. I'll be using Crips pink apples, mainly for their balanced sweet tart flavor, but also because their distinctive colored peel will give our juice a slightly pinkish hue. I'm aiming for around 400 ml of apple juice, so I'll need around 5 to 6 medium sized apples. This all depends on your juicer and the apples of course. To prevent oxidation and browning of the apple juice, I'll add 0.75 grams of ascorbic acid or vitamin C. Add that into your juicer container and mix into the pressed juice of the first few apple wedges before juicing the rest. If you don't have ascorbic acid, you can add 50 ml of lemon juice, but this will add some acidity as well. Citric acid on the other hand would only add acidity without vitamin C, so it wouldn't help with browning of the juice. Once you have enough of the pressed juice, it's time to add 0.6 grams of pectinex, a specialty enzyme that breaks down pectin structure, helping the juice to clarify. I've used this on the channel before, and it's the same way Jean-Felix clarified his apple juice. Since I'm not adding any heat, this might take longer to clarify. So in the fridge it goes overnight. After that, it's just a matter of straining it through a rinsed coffee filter or a muzzling cloth, both of which will take some time, then bottling. Can you skip this whole step and buy 100% clear apple juice? I mean, I guess, but where's the fun in that? With that done, it's finally time to make the cocktails. I'll explain what I'll be making too. Even though this is a smaller siphon, it would still be a waste to use the whole CO2 cartridge for just a single cocktail. So I'll be adding double measurements to what I'll be saying in what you'll see on the screen. Start with the chilled soda siphon and add 52.5 ml or 1 and 3 quarters of an ounce of Aberlour 12 scotch. Next, add 75 ml or 2 and a half ounces of the clarified apple juice. Like I mentioned in the previous episode, whenever there's carbonation in a drink, it's best to have all ingredients as cold as possible, since they retain more gas, and since there will be no dilution from shaking or stirring, add 30 ml or 1 ounce of water. 
to highlight some of the cherry notes from the scotch, I'll add two dashes of cherry bitters. And like we often do, two drops of saline solution, to highlight all of the flavors, just like in cooking. Close the siphon, add a CO2 cartridge and shake really well. Then slowly release all of the gas before opening the siphon. Take your highball glass or glasses from the freezer and fill them with ice. Gently pour the cocktail in the glass to keep as much carbonation as possible. Lastly, garnish the cocktails with a thin apple slice. If you watched some of the older episodes, you'd know I would share this drink with the Phantom Hand. But since she's got more important things to do right now, Ruby, the show's director, volunteered to help out. I miss the original Phantom Hand. Cheers, buddy. The aroma will reveal what to expect. Apples and soft malt whiskey. And while you'll know, this is clearly a whiskey highball. The wonderful sweet and sour balance from the apples makes it into something special. The cherry bitters just add to the fruity undertone, which lingers on the aftertaste. The fact that the whole cocktail is carbonized makes the bubbly mouthfeel even more intense and refreshing. All of that makes this a perfect transitional cocktail between summer and fall. And it's just another great way to enjoy apples. I'd like to thank everyone who has commented or reached out even when the episodes aren't dropping every week. It's a crazy time right now. And I really appreciate all of you. Cheers! Cocktail time family. <laughs>